the fair winds blow Our home is where the waters flow We'll show you what we've come to know On board while sailing wisdom So before I came into the picture, Herbie actually used to single-hand wisdom. Wisdom's a 45-foot Morgan from 1968, cutter rig, and he would single-hand it all through the Chesapeake Bay. And the Chesapeake Bay is not an easy place to sail. So today we're gonna do something a little bit different. We're gonna pretend that I'm not here and Herbie is going to completely single hand our journey from Francis Bay here in St. John to Waterlemon Key, also in St. John. <laughs> we're going to be about three miles, but it's gonna involve all of the challenges of picking up a mooring, leaving a mooring, sailing through narrows with currents, wind shifts from island shadows, and all that fun stuff. So let's see how Herbie handles himself. So to sail off a mooring, the first thing you need is everything ready. So we're gonna have two reefs in the main and our staysail already raised while we're still in the mooring ball. And then the important part about the mooring ball is you wanna have the line fished through it. So that way you have two cleats, one on your boat, and then it goes to the mooring, comes back just like that. So that way when you release the second cleat where it returns to, what you're doing is you're releasing one, the line goes free, you slip out of the mooring, and then you just pull in the line very quickly because your sails are up. So you wanna time it so that it's like this, so that the ball will pull away from the boat and everything just goes smoother. If it's crossed under the bow, then you're working blind if it gets kinked or stuck or something, you don't see it right away. So just take your time. The boat's gonna just yaw back and forth and just pick the one that's the tack you wanna have. The other important part is make sure that that tack isn't gonna like slime you into a wall, reef, neighboring boat, stuff like that. Okay, so now both sails are up. There's the mooring ball, so we're actually sailing past it. So that means that there's enough wind to give us thrust. We know it'll be safe. And when we release the line, I run back to the helm and start steering because no one's steering. Now a really, really life-changing thing that I put on this boat that makes single handing so easy is this. It's a self-tacker. So either tack over here or over there, it just, it glides. So now the staysail and the main are both self-tacking. So all I have to do is trim and then steer. I don't have to be sheeting as I'm short tacking or anything like that. It's such a life changer. So now the boat's gonna just fall back and we're looking pretty good here. All right, time to release. So having two reefs in the main, even though there's not a lot of wind here, we could really be full sail. It just makes it so much easier. You're short-handed, tacking and jiving, and just all these maneuvers, and I don't need a winch handle. I can just pull the main sheet, and the main comes right in, and jiving is easy. And ease is the important part, because you don't have time to be you know, fussy about the particulars. You have to get the job done and get it done quickly that we don't hit anyone. Jiving. Single-handing really isn't that complicated. It's just you have to know what are your next several steps, ideally all your next steps, and then have everything laid out ahead of time for it. So that way, all you need to do is just go from step to step. You don't have to then start sorting lines and stuff like that. So just being ready ahead of time is such a huge thing. So for example, when we left the mooring, we're gonna be grabbing another mooring. The boat hook is up there, and the line that's gonna go through the mooring pennant 
is dangling from the end of the bow. So it's not going to get in the water, it's not going to get in the prop either because it's not long enough to reach the prop. And when I run up there, it's just hook the mooring pennant, hook the line through it, I'm done. It's just like, just having those steps set up ahead just makes all the difference. So that island up there is British, and this one's US. Oh wow. Yeah, so it's like really close, and we can't cross the British line because bad things would happen to us. So I am watching Navionics like a hawk. Okay, we're going upwind through some tight areas. We're gonna give a little bit of motor to help supplement it. <laughs> Get us through here quicker. So that's one huge advantage of an electric motor over a diesel is when you want just a little bit of thrust, you can. Because with a diesel, if you turn it on, like to help you get through attack, and you're like on and off, on and off. Those short runs fill a diesel motor. Where electric, it's literally a glorified thruster. You want a little bit, you want a little more, it'll do it. Soon coming up on the British line, but we can't cross the British line because of COVID. The BBI is completely locked down right now. So we got that, but a good part is in the narrows, the current gets up to three to four knots and we're at slack water. So there's no current, <laughs> which is how I like it. Like we could have four knots pushing us, but then when you get to the mooring field, you're trying to grab a mooring single-handed in four knots of current. No, thank you. Okay, we're as close as I'm willing to get to the British line. Now we're tacking. Our anemometer's not working, but I'd say the wind's like eh, about 20, plus a 25. And some uh, sprinkles of light rain, so not really ideal Virgin Island sailing conditions. But compared to what we're used to, this is pretty nice. <laughs> Well, we sailed through the rain. Good job. Misted and dried in the process. So I panicked. I thought it was really crowded in here. It was windy, we were doing five knots. So I dropped the sails and then now we're motoring in. And then we got in here and it's not crowded. The winds are calmer. We probably could have picked it up by sail, but they're already down. So we're just gonna motor up to it. So pretty much we're just gonna motor up to it, stop right next to it and then I hook it and pull it in. Nice. 
attempt number one. This was my life before Maddie. <laughs> Picking up balls alone. <laughs> so one last trick when you're coming up on the ball is you come up, the boat will stall, and then get blown onto it. So as the boat's coming in, the line slack, you real quick grab it, tie everything up, and then do it fast. Now, if you still had your sails up because you didn't panic when you were coming in like I did, then the sails will be luffing while you're doing this whole maneuver. If you don't get the morning ball in time, the sails are gonna catch wind and they'll start sailing off. So nothing bad happens. That's rain. Yeah. All right. Oh, forward hatch is open. Oh my gosh. So it's not that hard to single hand a 45 foot boat or any boat. If it's properly set up and you think everything through ahead of time and everything's just set up so that you can do it easily and quickly, you can single hand any size boat. So that's pretty much just going to flip the motor in the view of the little tiny control module here. So, Price. and then another option I was looking at was uh, use Tesla cells. Thanks for watching this episode of Sailing Wisdom. Don't forget to like the video, share it with your friends, and hit subscribe so you don't miss the next Rigging Doctor episode. And if you're interested in even more Rigging Doctor awesomeness, consider becoming a patron to see all of our extras. Can't wait to see you next time as you join us out here on the high seas.